Hey everybody, it's T. I decided to make a quick video, hopefully quick, um, for my page, In Time Knowledge, Think Bigger. Um, I wanted to talk about um, this book that I got. Uh, it's really good. It's called Planet X, and it talks about the Cold Revival Connection, um, and it talks about um, the comet, this comet. Um, that's coming and um, how it cycles around and um, how it has something to do with the sinking of Atlantis, the deluge, you know, Noah's flood, uh, the exodus in 2012, which is really 2020 um, because 2020, um, well, 2012 was based on the Gregorian calendar. So really, it's, it, you know, 2012 was 2020. So when nothing happened, then it was like, what? What's going on? Well, it's because it's supposed to be now. So this book that I've been reading is like really good. So I figured I would share um, a page or two from it, um, from the book, and then from the actual Colburn uh, Bible itself. Just to um, let people, I guess, help people to understand that... Um, Right now, there's so much going on in the world, and it seems like it's so crazy, and everybody is just crazy, and the people that are in charge, and it's like, what's going on? When you read this information, it helps you to understand what's going on, and that people have been planning um, for this for a long time, and not telling anybody, and kind of telling everybody through um, entertainment, and that's crazy, because I love sci-fi, and I watch all the sci-fi stuff. And I have a bunch of movies that I watch over and over and over. And it's like, you know, watching the story unfold like my whole life. And it's amazing that uh, people are so sinister to really hide things. So anyway, I'm going to uh, whip it around and um, show you this book. So this is the book, um, Planet X, The Colburn Bible Connection and what it's about. And um, then this is the actual Colburn Bible, which is like way cool. Um, when I first heard about it, it was so interesting. I read this sucker in like, in like I think like a couple days. <clears throat> I listened to it on the audio and it was amazing. So what's interesting is in this book, uh, Planet X, um, there's a page that I thought was super interesting. Um, let's see, looks like, oh yeah, it's page, here, page six. And this is like so interesting. Um, it basically talks about, let's see, what's, what's this first, uh, this first chapter just talks about the Colburn Bible itself. Um, the book goes into, um, the orbit of the 10th planet, the Colburn Bible, um, the howling of unleashed winds, Tiamat. Uh, NASA and the Dark Star, uh, the Sumerian tablets with uh, Planet X, the Standing Stone layout, the Serpent Mound, Chinese Celestial Dragon, the Destroyer and Dark Sister, Planet X forecast and 2012 Survival Guide, which I have that book, the Crescent, uh, Planet X, um, uh, the, uh, the Orbit, uh, and the Celtic Frightener. So it has a lot of information in this little bitty thin book. But um, it's profound. So anyway, um, here um, in this, it talks about the Colburn Bible and um, how many books um, Egyptian ac academics and scribes. Uh, after the, uh, it's, it's comprised of 11 books. This first six were written by Egyptian academics and scribes after the Exodus. The five remaining books were penned by the Celtic priests of early Britain after the death of Jesus. The collected works were later moved to the Glastonbury Abbey, where they remained until the 12th century A.D. Um, and well, let me move this because this is okay, giving me a shadow. Um, <clears throat> it says briefly mentioned in the introduction, this ancient manuscript apparently was kept under lock and key within private Masonic libraries after several prophecies came to pass, including the fall of the Soviet Union and the rise of radical Islam. It was then revealed to the world in 1992. So this is what's interesting. It says, if the Colburn Bible 
contain startling passages that describe the return of Planet X. Where's my pen? The return of Planet X, the elite would unquestionably want to keep this under wraps, whilst at the same time start prepping and preparing at whatever cost to survive into another age. According to the above verse, it appears a select few will survive. Will survive. So the verses are actually from the Colburn, Colburn Bible itself, which I have here. And it's Manuscripts 3, chapter 3, verse 7, 9, and 10. So it's hit, listed here in the book, but I'm actually going to read it from the actual Bible itself. So Manuscripts, um, chapter 3, verse 7 says... Thus, it was in the days of the heavenly wraith, which have gone, and thus it will be in the days of doom when it comes again. The times of its coming and going are known unto the wise. These are the signs and times which shall precede the destroyer's return. 110 generations pass into the west, and nations will rise and fall. Men will fly in the air as birds and swim in the seas as fishes. So we know about planes and submarines, things like that. Men will talk peace one with another. Hypocrisy and deceit shall have their day. Women will be as men and men as women. Passion will be a plaything of men. And then verse 9, it says, um, oops, hold on. Uh, verse 9, it says, um, then men will be at ill ease. Well, you know what? Let me read eight because it, it goes with it too. A nation of soothsayers shall rise and fall and their tongue shall be speech learned. A nation of lawgivers shall rule the earth and pass away into nothingness. One worship will pass into the four quarters of the earth, talking peace and bringing war. A nation of the seas will be greater than any other, but will be as an apple rotten at the core and will not endure. A nation of traitors will destroy men with wonders, and it shall have its day. Then shall high strive with the low, and north wind the south, and east with the west, and the light with the darkness. Men shall be divided by their races, and the children will be born um, strangers among them. Brothers shall strive with brother, and husband with wife. Fathers will no longer instruct their sons, and the sons will be wayward. Women will become the common property of men and will no longer be held in regard and respect. So um, 9 and 10, which is what's quoted in the book, um, 9 says, Then men will be ill at ease in their hearts. They will seek, they know not what, and uncertainty and doubt will trouble them. They will possess great riches, but be poor in spirit. Then will the heavens tremble and the earth move. Men will quake in fear. And while terror walks with them, the heralds of doom will appear. They will come softly as thieves to the tombs. Men will not know them for what they are. Men will be deceived. The hour of the destroyer is at hand. And verse 10 says, in those days, men will have the great book before them. Wisdom will be revealed. The few will be gathered for the stand. It is the hour of trial. The dauntless ones will survive. The stout-hearted will not go down to destruction. So if you think about someone knowing this information in advance and understanding what's about to happen, then this next part right here will make sense. So back to the book, he says, um, so, so, uh, According to the above verse, it appears a select few will survive. So it says, think about, let me get it focused. Here we go. So think about it. If a group of people possessed an 800 year old document stating without doubt that a catastrophe would occur upon the return of a celestial object, then they would have the luxury to carefully plan out their survival by secretly building facilities such as underground bunkers, gigantic ocean liners, and future command posts. Now, this guy wrote this in 2008, and it was based on all of his research, but 
This is 2020, and where are they running to? Underground bunkers. And you think about um, in 1998, the movies they made about comets and disaster, uh, Deep Impact, um, Armageddon. But you think about the movie 2012. There's like so many movies. You can just go on and on and on. And this is the type of thing that they've been showing us because they knew information from this from this book plus others so um he writes the general public has a right to be informed of this which is so funny because all the sci-fi movies are like the public needs to know and they're like no they're going to panic it's like what the hell um <laughs> uh, anyway so it says uh, the, the general public has a right to be informed of this, as well as the manuscript's terrifying secret. So this writer uh, painstakingly uh, searched every passage of the Coburn Bible that speaks of the destroyer or refers to it. And the destroyer is also referred to um, in the Bible itself. Um, it says this work will outline the return of the destroyer by arguing its cyclical nature. To prove this crucial point, this writer includes three epic sagas gleaned from the Colburn Bible, including The Sinking of Atlantis, Egyptian's motherland, which is amazing to understand that, that Egypt had a motherland, and that motherland was like here, like right? The Deluge, which is Noah's Flood, including the Celtic account of the Deluge, um, the Exodus, including the Flight to Freedom. As you will discover later, the, the destroyer directly caused or contributed to all three of these events. And I was researching and it showed that even when Sodom and Gomorrah um, was destroyed, that was uh, in the sky. So God uses celestial objects to take care of things here on earth. We just don't really think about it or, or understand because I guess we just don't think bigger, you know. Um, but he commands all those things and can do whatever he wants. Uh, I mean, if the moon can control the tide and cause floods, then think about it, you know. So it says, um, this is important. The elite have taken the Colburn Bible's warning very serious, very seriously. And it's really obvious that that's the case. Because right now, you see with the situation of uh, the virus, the vaccine, all the commotion, all the distraction happening to try to get rid of people before people find out, but also having bunkers um, over off of China, you know, building the, the, uh, all the submarines and what they're doing over there and all the underground facilities and so on and so forth. So it's basically like, you know, like it's trying to leave everybody up here for destruction. So. You know, we'll see what happens, but the point is, there's so much information out there that we don't know about, and we're just not getting. And some people, when I research, some people have been talking about this stuff for a long time, but, you know, they discount and discredit what they have to say, and so people don't listen. And so, um, it's just interesting. So, it's good for everybody to research, try to wake up and understand what's going on because um when you know what you're dealing with you can um live a, at a little more peace i mean that's that's difficult with people dying every day from um the viruses and things like that and being worried about 5g and what that's going to activate and you know there's just so much fear that they're trying to instill in man and you know you can't have fear and um, you have to keep your energy up and you have to be positive. And the best thing to do is research, research, and research. Try to find as much information as you can. And I'm going to um, keep posting more information from this book um, because of the story about Atlantis. Man, there's just so many different stories that really tell you what's going on. But it helps you to understand, oh, that's why they're crazy. Oh, that's why they're doing this and doing that. And it's like, ooh, they are really going to get it, you know. So anyway, um, that's it. Again, um, the books are Planet X, the Colburn Bible Connection, and then the actual Colburn Bible itself. 
Um, I have like tons of books that I have been reading and researching, and I found one here. I'm gonna share because other people are searching like me and don't really know what's going on and would like to know. So, um, anyway, that's it for now.